Hey everyone, uh, this is Dr. Chin. I'm making a uh, tutorial video on how to conduct a simple uh, mediation analysis uh, within the framework of structural equation modeling. And so as you can see here, this is the um, structural model uh, that we are going to test uh, with conscientious test, which is one of the uh, big five um, personality traits, uh, predicting uh, PTSD symptoms uh, due to uh, COVID-related stressors. Uh, and uh, we're putting uh, religious coping as uh, one as the mediator of interest over here. Um, so religious coping is basically it's a very general uh, subscale to be honest. It's not a very um, <clears throat> it's not specific enough uh, for us to come up with some really useful interpretations out of this. But basically, generally speaking, it's referring to someone's uh, tendency to uh, rely on religious types of uh, ways of coping with stressors. Uh, sometimes people use um, you know, religious types of rituals to uh, facilitate engagement um, with uh, the stressor itself, uh, say active coping. Some people use um, religious types of um, uh, rituals to actually escape or to run away from the issues. And that's the, you know, not so good uh, type of uh, 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 coping. And so because this is so general, um, the interpretation is limited, but nonetheless, for this demonstration, uh, we will use this as a mediator in um, this particular example. So we got conscientiousness as defined by three item parcels uh, coming from the big five inventory, PTSD coming from four item parcels coming from the PCL five, and uh, uh, religious coping coming from uh, four items, uh, which is uh, items 13, 18, 48, and 60. So let's go into um, uh, our studio for us to um, start the analysis. Uh, so I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead and set the working directory here and import the file into the global environment. Read.csv is the function that we're going to use to import the uh, file into the global environment. We're going to call this master. Uh, and we have 157 observations with 26 variables. This is similar to the, to the data set that I used in the other video on uh, simple moderation. Um, and basically what um, in the next few lines of code, what I'm doing over here is uh, I am treating the data uh, in order to examine missing data patterns. Uh, we're, we're, uh, we're actually going to go ahead and uh, do some multiple implementations to take care of some uh, missing cells. And then we're gonna identify and get rid of multivariate outliers. And then we're going to uh, check the data for uh, multivariate uh, normality because it's typically one of the assumptions underlying a lot of uh, latent variable types of uh, multivariate uh, analysis. So we're gonna skip through all that right now because I have other videos that talk about how you can prepare the data set that actually walk through those steps like uh, more specifically. Uh, so I'm gonna go down here and jump straight to the section where we start working on the uh, simple mediation analysis. So I'm gonna go ahead and run all chunks above and it's going to run all the analysis. Um, now I'm not gonna restart that. So it's in the imputation, I'm gonna select one of the data sets at random and um, uh, check for uh, multivariate outliers. Um, and as you can see, in terms of multivariate normality, uh, we're actually doing pretty okay. I don't see any um, gross violations here in terms of multivariate um, normality. Um, okay, so we are going to uh, use the data set called no out. Um, that means to say this is the data set that has no outliers and it has been imputed. Uh, you can see there that we have tossed out about four people from this uh, due to um, being flagged as multivariate outliers. So sometimes that can skew your parameter estimates quite a bit as well. So uh, we have the uh, seed over here. This can be any number. Um, we're just setting the seed so you can get more uh, consistent um, uh, uh, results every time we rerun the, the analysis. So this is where the magic happens. Um, so we're going to call this stm.model. You can call this anything you want uh, in an arrow kind of pointing towards that. And we're going to define this object. First of all, we're going to um, define the measurement model. Uh, as shown over here, let me put this side by side. Um, you know, we want conscientiousness as a construct to be defined by these three item parcels. We have IC1, 2, and 3, as shown over here. PCL is a construct to be defined by item parcels one, two, three, four. And so that's shown over here. And then uh, the religious coping is a construct to be defined by these four indicators as shown over here. 
Then we're going to uh, model the uh, structural paths over here. So first of all, we want the, uh, the A path. So this is basically religious coping regressed on conscientiousness. So now that we've made the latent constructs, we can actually tell um, uh, are in order to regress the latent construct of religious coping on conscientiousness. You might notice that we have uh, A followed by an asterisk over here. We're labeling this particular path uh, A because uh, we're, we'll come back to this later when uh, it comes to uh, calculating the indirect effect and direct effects. And so we're gonna call this regression uh, formula religious being regressed on, so that's the tilde. Um, a uh, asterisk, so that's just a label uh, uh, for, for, for this particular line of code. And then we want the B path, PCL, regressed on religious coping. And we put, we label this as B, that's indicated by B asterisk. Uh, so that's P, uh, PCL, uh, PTSD, uh, being regressed on uh, religious coping. We also had the C path, and this shown, is shown right here, where uh, PTSD is regressed upon conscientiousness. Um, and so that is PCL regressed upon conscientiousness. And it's interesting when you do this in, um, uh, when you do this through um, SEM tools, uh, because this does look a little bit different compared to how you would uh, model the, the regression uh, models. Uh, but this is just the uh, language that, um, that the computer speaks when it comes to identifying these paths. So now that we got path A, B, and C, that's path A, B, and C, uh, in order to calculate uh, the um, or estimate the significance of the uh, indirect path. So that's A multiplied by B. And I know this is confusing because this looks like C multiplied by conscientiousness and B multiplied by religious coping. Uh, they, they mean different things if they're attached to different elements. So in this case, we're saying that C uh, for this particular path, this regression path is labeled C, but in this case, it's actually multiplied when we uh, specify two particular um, uh, uh, pass here. So um, A multiplied by B is going to be our indirect effect. And the total effect is basically going to be C plus A multiplied by B. That's going to be our total effect. Uh, and so it's total. Um, and we have this, this sign over here that kind of looks like a, I don't know what it looks like, kind of looks like a skull or something. Um, so that is basically um, um, miss, uh, what's the I'm missing out two words, but basically uh, it's two dots <laughs> vertically uh, followed by equal sign, uh, C plus A asterisk B. And then we're gonna constrain the covariances between the latent variables to be zero because for whatever reason, sometimes uh, the, uh, the function likes to have covariances between the latent variables. And we're gonna say, no, we don't want any covariances between the latent variables because we only want these unidirectional paths between our latent variables. Uh, this pointing to that, is pointing to that and conscientiousness pointing to PTSD. So that's going to be our measurement and structural model right here. We're going to run that. And we're going to fit the model. So we're going to use SEM function as the function. Uh, SEM the model is referring to the, the model that we just created over here with this pointy arrow. Um, and data is going to be, it's going to come from the no outliers data set. Um, and uh, estimator is maximum likelihood. And this is just double making sure again that the uh, covariances between the latent variables are zero. So technically I wouldn't even need this right now. Um, so try that and see, see if that will work. Okay, let's fit a path diagram. Uh, we're gonna use SEM path with uh, P capitalized uh, and SEM.fit. This is coming from this model that we just fitted over here or just estimated. Uh, we want the labels to have standard, fully standardized parameter estimates. This is just the type of layout that works for this particular example. Uh, and I think I included some uh, modifications here on the margins um, to, to help with better visibility. So this actually goes uh, this is the uh, bottom, this is the left side of the margin, top side of the margin, and the right side of the margin. Kind of works that way, not really, because there are other elements uh, in the visual as well, but I kind of I play around with it to, to get what I want. Um, so 
Um, this is the um, structural model that we see. So PCL is the outcome of interest, and we've got two lines pointing here. Uh, one is from conscientiousness, but there's also an indirect path from conscientiousness to religious coping uh, and from religious coping to PCL. Uh, and each of these uh, uh, um, constructs have their respective indicators as specified in the model too. And we can see that there are no covariances between the lipid variables, uh, which means that uh, my code over here works like a charm. Okay, so let's take a look at the parameters we want. Um, uh, standardized uh, parameter estimates, if at all possible, uh, fully standardized and partially standardized, but usually a little bit of fully standardized, depending on what parameter estimates those are, uh, and we want R square as well. So we use a summary function to check out the parameter estimates. Um, so yeah, so we remember the interaction term that uh, we created earlier, I D one, and this is you know, the, multi the multiplication of path A and path B. Well, we actually have an estimate for that. And this is actually barely statistically significant, suggesting that there is an indirect path uh, going from conscientiousness to religious coping to PCL. So we'll take a closer look at the parameter estimates to see how that works exactly. Uh, and the total effect that was not uh, st st uh, statistically significant, uh, but usually people are interested in the indirect effect. I also like to, look, I like to look at the R squares to make sure that there are no Haywood uh, parameter estimates here that are out of bounds. Uh, and I also like to look at the residual variances, specifically the fully standardized residual variances in this column right here to make sure that we have no residual variances that are negative, but that's usually one of the signs that um, the, uh, the, the computer ran into some issues with estimating the parameters. Could be due to a number of things such as um, errors in data entry, or maybe it's just a bad model or due to other things as well. Um, as you can see here, uh, we have no covariances between the uh, latent variables and uh, we have these specific parameter estimates. So this is uh, path A, path B, path C. So uh, Levan actually um, uh, identifies them then for you so it's kind of easy to look at. The path from um, conscientiousness to um, to uh, to uh, religious coping was statistically significant as conscientiousness increases. Uh, so more detailed, more systematic you are in terms of those tendencies, in terms of your personality traits, the more likely you're going to uh, rely on religious coping, which is interesting. Because that, so that kind of gives me a general sense of what that might mean uh, in terms of what exactly the uh, the um, the students may be thinking about when you think about religious coping, given that it was broadly defined. Um, and uh, we have the path B and path C. So if you can see here that this is statistically significant as well. Um, and as religious coping increases, it looks like um, PTSD symptoms uh, increases. So my guess over here is that the students that were responding to the questionnaires, they were using a certain type of religious coping mechanism um, that, uh, as an avoidance, uh, uh, as, as an experiential avoidance to uh, avoid dealing with uh, some of the stressors coming from COVID. That'll be, that'll be my guess, given that again, the items are too general uh, for us to say, what exactly uh, uh, do we mean by religious coping? Because some religious coping uh, skills are actually really helpful and others, they're not helpful at all. Um, conscientiousness uh, being addressed in PCL. So this is path C. This is the, um, the, the direct effect. And this was not statistically significant anymore, suggesting that uh, there was a, 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 an indirect effect um, uh, that was uh, statistically significant. Okay, um, and here we've got the standardized effect loadings uh, for the uh, latent variables. Um, and so just look for, we want these factor loadings to be more than 0.3, typically if you look at standardized all. And there we have it. Those are the parameter estimates for the um, simple mediation model. Uh, we can get the global fit indices by using fit that measures and then identifying the, the um, model that we just fitted. And we can see over here, CFI is 0.94, TLI is 0.92. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, it's not bad. Um, REM-C 
uh, is 0.101. So that is above the 0.08 cutoff um, for a good fit. And then if you look at SRMR, um, standardized root mean square residual, this is 0.06. I think generally we would want this to be less than 0.06. 06 if that are possible. So the global finances are, 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 are basically saying, yeah, we did it okay. Uh, not too great here in terms of the overall model fit. Um, so maybe something interesting to think about theoretically um, as we consider the results. So uh, yeah, that'll be how you would um, fit a, a simple mediation model uh, within the uh, context of SCM. I hope that was helpful and uh, let me know if you have questions.